Okay, in this video I'm going to be explaining how I make arrows and I'm working on some arrows for a friend of mine. They're made from river cane. Now the first thing I do when I make arrows from river cane is I, uh, I season them myself. I get them green either from a friend or harvest them myself green and I peel off the outer layer. Now a lot of guys don't do that, but I like to peel off the outer layer first and then season them. Uh, if they're really, really uh, wet, like right after a right after a uh, storm or something, and they've been subjected to a lot of rain, I don't peel them right away because they do they do tend to crack if you do that, especially right here at the nodes. So I, I guess I wait a little while to where I feel the. Uh, cane is dry enough and I peel off the outer layer when it's still fairly green it makes it easier that way and then I season them now these are dried for for about three years or four years so these have been there for a long time but I think a year is good enough and uh, after they're seasoned I go ahead and I uh, cut a section out that spines to the correct spine now I wanted these to be between 50 and 55 pounds so I just roughly put them on a on a um, spine tester and then figured out which section would be the 55 pounds and I cut the section straighten them and respine them and then cut them to length I cut them in this case 30 inches to give me some you know extra area here in front of the node. I'll show you why I did that in a minute. But I try to match them all as far as where the nodes are. I try to match them toward the front. See all these nodes are matched here. The other nodes I don't pay attention to. And at the bottom I try not to get the node to be at the very very end. So after I uh, spine them, straighten them, I weigh them. Now even though they're the same spine in a lot of cases the weight differs a lot. Let's see if I can find the lightest one I've got is 312 grains. The heaviest one is 340 grains, but they're both spined at 55 pounds and the same length. So there has to be a way to compensate for that or to add weight somehow to these to get them to be the same. They have to all be at least 340. If I have a, a batch of these and the heaviest one is 340, they've all got to be at least 340. So you've got to add some kind of weight. Now the four shafts add a little bit of weight but I don't depend on that. Uh, sometimes I can't add very much four shaft or sometimes I don't add four shaft at all. So what I do is I take a piece of uh, grounding wire, copper grounding wire, and I put that, I glue that inside the node, inside this section here. That's one reason why I like the node in the front. And this, these are give myself about three inches in this case to make sure I had enough space for the wire because the difference between 312 and 340 is quite a bit. Um, now these are for a 50 pound bow so uh, the total grain the good practice would be the total grain weight for a 50 pound bow would be a 500 grain arrow for these type of arrows these traditional type of arrows so I've already added some copper in here so let's, I'll just weigh this so I can show you what I've got this weighing at now. Turn it on first. I don't know if you can see that, but it's 408. 408 grains. So 
so I've got to get them all up to about 408 grains. Now to do that, like I said, I use copper. And I just glue it inside here. So after I got them all to, what did I say, 408? Around 400 grains a piece. I start uh, figuring out what I'm going to do for the mounting of the arrowheads. Now for these, I chose four shafts, and these are Osage. I've got plenty of Osage scrap, so I just sand out some of these dowels on my sander. You know, I, I cut, I rip them on the uh, bandsaw square, and then I round them off on my sander, just by hand. Kind of like I did that bone arrowhead. Anyway, I also taper this on the rounded part of the sander. Now this angle here roughly matches this angle here on this stone reamer that I use. And what I do is I just ream the hole, you know, so that's going to match up with this tapered foreshaft. and make sure it's tight. Now this is going to be different for each cane arrow so all these have to be made separately. They can't be made mass production. They've got to be made to fit individually and customized to fit just right and so there's no play. You don't want it any uh, back and forth motion like this. So this part of the uh, foreshaft has to match the diameter, the inside diameter of the cane. Like I said, I round these on the belt sander on the rounded part of the belt. And I just made up this, uh, you know, I napped this reamer. It works pretty good. I just ream out the hole. And I do that on all of them, one at a time, to fit the four shafts. Now these four shafts can be glued in. Uh, permanently, which is what I'm going to do on the ones that I'm making. Uh, I'm going to finish out I'll finish out these three completely, but those other three I'm going to be sending off as a kit so they won't be complete. But I'll, I'll go over the process of how I complete these you know, in upcoming videos. This is the first in the series. And uh, I also mark once I have these aligned and fit properly, I, I put marks on these so I know where to realign. Now the next step after I get the four shafts and the shafts matched up, uh, there is an important step in here I, f I forgot to mention is the uh, wrapping of the uh, cane here. Now I just wrap with regular thread. I like to use this here. It's 37% uh, cotton and 63% polyester. It's a very strong thread. And I use this for mounting feathers and for mounting the arrowheads for the arrowhead wrap. I'm going to be using mainly modern materials. Well, basically all modern materials for this, for these arrows. I'll be using tight bond. To I already glued these four shafts in permanently. Just waiting for the glue to dry with the tight bond. I'll be using tight bond with the thread to wrap the arrowheads. I'll be using tight bond with the thread to wrap the fletchings and to wrap the uh, the knock just ahead of the knock so it doesn't split the cane. Um, these are primitive arrows, but they're basically modern primitive arrows. <laughs> uh, I'll be using obsidian arrowheads and. This size is legal in most states. One inch base, one inch wide base, no barbs, which means basically straight base. And there's a big difference between the modern interpretation of a hunting point, either stone or obsidian, and uh, real ones. Now these are reproductions of a couple of southwest point styles or Texas point styles and you can see the big difference between what they used to really use for hunting and the modern interpretation so 
So these have got barbs. They're very lightweight. They weigh less than 40 grains a piece. And they're very, very thin. These, these weigh on average about 60 grains. Relatively thick, so they're durable. And one inch wide at the base, which meets most laws for hunting deer. Which is what these, these will be used for. So these are uh, arrows for hunting deer, made of river cane. Um, I hope I've covered all the steps here. Let's see. I didn't mention how much the uh, foreshaft and the uh, the arrowheads, they add up to about 100 grains. So at 408 plus 100 grains is about 508. Uh, it's going to vary a little bit. So about 500 grains is pretty good for a 50 pound bow, which is what these are for. 50 pound bow at, at 28 inch draw, which means quite a bit is going to stick out beyond the bow. But that, there's two reasons for that. I like to keep the weight forward as much as possible on the arrow. Uh, I could have put the copper weight inside this part of the arrow and still kept it, you know, the weight in front of center. But for me, the arrows fly much better if I keep the weight as far forward as possible. And that's why I, I match the nodes up front. It kind of gives me a backing for the copper wire so they back up into it. And this is this leaves me plenty of room for uh, a long enough piece of wire just in case I need it, and also for the fore shaft. The uh, the part that inserts into the cane has to be, you know, sufficiently long to give enough stability. So that plus the copper, I give myself about three inches just to be safe. They don't touch inside usually. Um, okay, now once these are dry, what I'm going to do is remove this thread, sand this foreshaft down to match the diameter of the uh, cane, and then I'll taper it, notch it, and uh, mount the arrowhead in here. But I'll go over that in the next video or in one of the next videos. And after all that's done, I, I rewrap. I don't rewrap it. I, re I wrap the arrowhead, and then I'll end up rewrapping the uh, this part of the cane. So it'll go about half inch below the arrowhead, and then another wrapping, I guess about a, an inch on the cane here, so it'll prevent it from splitting just in case. The glue bond is usually pretty strong, but I like to wrap it anyway. But I'll get into that in the next video. Okay, let's see if I remembered everything here. I'll be making some more videos on different kinds of arrows, but for now this is the uh, a good opportunity for me since I am making a set for a friend of mine. Uh, traditional primitive arrows. Okay, that's it.